Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Even though we're technically filming this on Friday the 18th, that is because I am going to be offline this weekend. And so we're pre-recording this for Monday. This means, however, that there is no Monday mystery that is airing this week. This week's been very hectic and crazy, all good things, but it will return next Monday with our newest installation from Olympia National Park up in Washington. How are you doing, Stephanie? I'm doing a lot better than I was last week. Good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I feel, I'm feeling really good. Um, really, really good. And you look beautiful as always. Oh, now, normally you. Taylor is with us, but Taylor is focusing right now. She's slammed with her quantum healing right now, like super slammed. And so she's focusing on getting through all of her clients that she's working with in the quantum healing. And once her schedule releases her, she will be able to join again with these tarot fun reads for you guys. Um, so that is where she is. Um, I will still continue to put her links down in the description box below. So you guys can go over and subscribe to her channel because hopefully she will be back once her schedule lightens up a little bit. She's an incredible healer in the quantum and her quantum healings take like hours, right? Stephanie, I mean, it's a lot of work. So oh, yeah, um, I think, I think she goes, has people go under for like five hours at a time sometimes. Yeah. So it does take up a lot of time. And she's the conduit that's doing that. So she, it, it takes a lot from her. So right now she's just going to focus on her private clients and then she'll be back once all of that is, is easier. That workload is easier for her, which is totally understandable. Um, so Stephanie will be reading. I have my, I also have some cards out too, just in case we need like a second pull. I am going to be using my Jungian cards today, which are literally some of the most complicated cards to use. Aren't they? Stephanie, I sent you a Jungian deck a while ago. Um, they're beautiful cards. This was the first deck I ever bought. Obviously, like, ha ha ha, I would I would go and buy the hardest deck to read as my, my first deck because I'm an overachiever like that. And I also have my um, Angels of Atlantis Oracle cards too with me. And I know Stephanie's already pulled her cards. But before we get into some of y'all's questions, we do want to talk about um, spiritual hygiene. We mentioned that in our last episode and you guys said you wanted us to talk about that more. Now, height, cleanliness, um, the, the Sanskrit word for cleanliness is saucha. Now, Sanskrit is a very holy language. It's a vibrationally holy language, saucha. And when we talk about cleanliness or hygiene, we're not just talking about in any type of spiritual practice, whether that's divination, whether that's yoga, Reiki, martial arts, whatever, that saucha isn't just about the physical body. It's also so a, it also means like an order or a discipline. Um, and and I, with card reading, I, we know that there are so many people getting their own tools of divination and, and tools of divination can be used for the positive and for the negative. They can be used to shed light on truth or they can be used to manipulate depending on who the conduit is reading the cards. And there's telltale signs as to who's spiritually hygienic and who's not. And so one thing I want to point out too, the reason why I'm using my Jungian cards today is because I'm resting my original or the deck that I use the most frequently. Um, can we talk about that more, Stephanie, about resting tools, resting cards? <clears throat> um, yeah. So it's so important that you do not overuse a tarot deck and that um, <clears throat> you're, excuse me, I'm going to be clearing my throat a lot today as I have a little bit of a cough again but we'll, we'll get through it. So it's super important not to overuse a deck because what happens is you get a lot of energies on that deck. You do want to make sure you're saging in between um, reading on different people. I never do a reading, then use the same deck without saging it and blessing the deck. <clears throat> so what I do is, and all of the people that I've done readings on, they know very, very well, I ask the divine creator, God, to come in and Archangel Michael to come in and make sure that I am well protected, the cards are well protected, and I'm only channeling of the light. Um, but sometimes you might get some dark stuff that comes in. And that does happen on occasion. It really depends um, what you're reading and who you're reading. Um, but if you start to find that your deck is starting to get a little bit on the dark side of things, you definitely want to either put your cards in the chronological order and put maybe some selenite over it. Mm -hmm. You can put it out in the sun. <clears throat> what else? You can um, just put them in the box, just put them off to the side, rest them for maybe a few weeks. Um, I just started to rest one of my decks because yesterday I felt like it was heavily getting manipulated. Not a big deal. 
all you do is just put it in the box, put it in chronological order, put some, put a selenite stick on it, or maybe some um, rose quartz or clear quartz, something that's of cleansing, um, or in the sun, uh, pink Himalayan salt is also good for clearing auras. Um, <clears throat> exactly. So I would show you guys my selenite, but I, it's in the house. <laughs> um, also black obsidian is good for absorbing. There you go. Um, Black obsidian is really good, or black tourmaline is really good for absorbing really, really strong negative energies, demonic energies. That's Thank obsidian? you for your <laughs> thanks for the demonstration. Yeah. <clears throat> so, anyways, um, yeah, uh, it's it's very important too that you know how the energy feels when you're doing a reading. Um, yesterday, I I won't mention the name of the person I did a reading, but I was. I, I like to be very transparent because I was feeling like my cards were manipulated a little bit before the reading yesterday. I just said, do not pay me yet. Let's wait until I feel the energy and make sure that I'm my everything is clean here. And I didn't feel anything was manipulated during that reading. So we went ahead. Um, but I'm very transparent. If I feel like something is very heavy and dense, that's normally an indicator that something is just not quite right. Um, I will not continue to do a reading if I start to feel very, very dense, heavy, evil energies. Um, you will know your body will respond to it. Normally, if you're doing a reading on, some, on somebody and you start to feel happiness, giddiness, you're laughing with the person, um, that, that high uh, vibrational spiritual um, reactions come in. Laughter is a big thing. I laugh with the people I read with all the time. Um, I've bonded with a lot of them. It's been absolutely uh, a great experience. Um, but it's so important to know how your body is reacting and feeling toward the frequencies that are coming into the reading. It's super, super important. That goes for um, how, if you're next to somebody, if you're talking to somebody and something doesn't feel quite right, please follow your gut intuition. It's super, super important. Yeah. I was going to say, and, my, and that's how I'm resting my cards, my traditional card, the cards I use mostly. I, I put them in chronicle, chronological order yesterday, and they're actually that selenite stick I picked up has been on top of them, and I'm just leaving them. I ordered a new deck, too. I'm just leaving them for a few days because I had been using them a lot, and it started to feel like they needed to rest. And and also, I like that you 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 hit on the gut reaction because, again, these are just cards. Even though they hold... A symbolism and meaning they're just cards they're not gospel what what's controlling the cards is the conduits right and if something doesn't feel right i mean i've pulled cards with stephanie just because we practice together a lot offline and i'll look at the cards and i'll be like this doesn't make sense something's not right and so i'll scratch it and pull again you know that's okay whatever you lay out doesn't have to be gospel <laughs> if you feel like something's not right and it's not adding up you know um stephanie and i watch a bunch of readers now the dream clairvoyant uh mystic tori um what's candy's channel i can't even remember i can't even remember all their channel names but you'll see they have like multiple decks and they'll pull from different decks and they kind of feel which deck needs to be used um and so when you'll you'll hear them say all the time like take what resonates take what resonates if some if stephanie is pulling for a question stephanie nor i know your full life story and so what she's interpreting interpreting in her cards is what she knows based on the question and what she's feeling from the cards that does not mean that it's the truth so if something's not resonating, then you you need to listen to that within your gut, right? Because mm -hmm. the, again, these are just cards. That's all yeah. they are, cards. So, what is, <clears throat> sorry again. Um, what I what I really urge people that I do readings for is right in the beginning. I always make sure they understand this is a tool, and just because I pull something doesn't mean they can make a decision based off of just that one reading. You really need to look within, uh, very, very deep within, use your intuition. If I'm reading a question for you on this show, or I'm actually doing a reading for you, one-to-one, <clears throat> -one, and something feels off about it, please, by all means, just disregard it. You don't have to follow what I'm saying. Um, that's, it's all your intuition. 
If you get goosebumps, if the hair starts standing up on your arms a little bit, that might actually mean that there is some truth in it because truth holds a, seat, a certain frequency and your body reacts to that frequency. So your body knows in response to certain things in a different way. Now, there's certain times I've pulled and my heart feels like it just drops down to my feet. That's when I'm like, okay, I'm going to redo this. This happened yesterday. I'm going to redo this. And you know what happened is, and Bryce is my witness because she was right there on the Zoom with me. I kept pulling the same exact cards no matter how much I shuffled. And it felt so, so off. So that's when I made the conscious decision. I said, you know what? Something doesn't feel right. I'm going to put my cards down. I have to put them in order to, and put the selenite over them. I haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. But before I do use that deck again, I will be doing the same exact thing you did with your deck. Um, so it's just very, very um, important to, to note these things. If you're using divination tools, the other thing to note too is that with great power comes great responsibility. So if you're using these tools you are re and you're doing um, readings on people, you are responsible for making sure that only the light is being channeled through. Mm -hmm. um, and making the conscious decision like I did yesterday, I wasn't sure if I was going to have a clear reading because of what I was noting in my other deck of cards, but you have to take responsibility if you're doing these things. You have to make sure that you are channeling of the light and not of the darkness. I mean, you do have free will, you do have free choice, but we need to remember that if we're working for the light, we need to channel the light. So you do have to make sure that you are aware of these things before you do any kind of readings on anybody. I mean, by all means, read for yourself, great, whatever, but if you're reading on somebody, you have a responsibility to make sure you're doing it. Um, and we all we all interpret the cards differently, and that's perfectly fine. But as far as hygiene goes with your tools, there's great responsibility in that. Yeah, and, and it's I want to take them very seriously. And like you said, it depends. Like like this is the Empress card in the Jungian deck, and so when you're looking at this Empress card, and of course it depends on what it's lined up with. But if I'm reading it, and I'm an amateur reader, I'm not like Stephanie. I'm just very amateur, but I'm coming at the reading subconsciously and consciously from my own past experiences and my own perception of the world. Every human being is doing that. Every human being, whether they know it or not, is looking at situations with their own perception and their own experiences and their own wounds. And so that is very important that you don't take on something as totally fact. And you have a bit of, you know, take everything with a grain of salt. Um, don't ever lionize the reader. Don't ever lionize a teacher, a, like a, a guru, a teacher, and any type of spiritual. You need a spiritual teacher, absolutely. If you, if you, that's one of the main rules of spirituality is parampara. Is that's another Sanskrit word. It's this lineage of having someone hold you accountable because we all have blind spots. If you are engaging in a spiritual practice, whatever it is, and you don't have anybody there to guide you, you're fucking up. That's also bad hygiene. You need somebody, a trusted person, to keep you accountable and help guide you from your blind spots. However, that person, that card reader, that teacher, whatever it may be, you should never lionize them. You should never hero worship them. And a good teacher, a good card reader will stop that, will not allow people to lionize them, will not fall into that hero worship, mm -hmm. right? That's, um, that's I refuse, that's a pet peeve of mine. I've put posts on my community tab I refuse to have people do that with me. I'm a person. I'm just a human being. Um, I'm not God. Um, and I refuse to be treated as God because I I have downfalls in life. I've made mistakes in life and I will continue to make mistakes in life. I am not perfect. I will not read the cards 100% perfect as if I were God. Yeah. So just because I'm on a YouTube screen <laughs> doesn't mean we need to also... Um, uh, idolized like we do with Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We're learning this. Like we didn't know who those people, those uh, actors and actors were actors and actresses. Sorry. I can't talk right today either. Apparently. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, we would say, Oh, I love that actor and put post, you know, posters up in your, your room when you're a teenager of Justin Timberlake. Cause okay. I was one of those. And I did move to Joey Fatone. I'll admit. Okay. I'm a dork, but I don't know who your favorite in sync. I like Lance Bass and he turned out to be gay. So, <laughs> you know, anyways, <laughs> so it's like, you don't, you don't know them personally. 
So don't put them on a pedestal. And even if you did know them personally, just don't put them on a pedestal. We're just people. We're just ordinary people just trying to um, help and guide everybody in this great awakening um, because it is kind of a, um, uh, what's the word you would use for right now? Tumultuous? Uh, yeah. Brown? Very, very tumultuous. <laughs> a lot of turbulence. A lot of static. Yeah. We're yeah. like 42,000 feet above the, the ground right now. And like, it's bumpy. It's very yeah. bumpy. So like part of our job is kind of like, not necessarily 100% like a distraction, but it's kind of like just trying to help everybody bring each other together, like my groups and everything. That's kind of like the beauty in it. Um, and just, um, we're all in this together. As you say, we're walking each other home. Um, things are going to get better, but while we're in this turbulence, it's like we need to hold each other's hands through this and just walk each other through the turbulence and we'll get through it. We will get through it. But this is kind of just a little bit of entertainment while we're waiting for the big show. And right? hopefully it can have the whole, whole point of this is to help. You know, I think a lot of times, and I've said this before, when people ask questions, they already kind of know the answer, but they just want clarification. And that's what, what we're hoping will be for you. But at the end of the day, it's your life and your choice. And there's also this phenomenon that happens. And um, if you've been joining me on the Magdalene series and the yoga series, we talk a lot about the ego. The ego is the false sense of self. The ego is not real. The ego is the illusion you hold about yourself. Well, what starts to happen, I've seen this so many times in the yoga world, is when teachers or readers get lionized to get put on a pedestal they get hero worshipped their ego starts to be fed and when that ego gets too big then they're not reading with clarity now there is a difference between confidence and ego those are two very separate things for example people always say oh mr t has an ego and i call bullshit on that no he's confident yeah. if he had an ego he wouldn't have done what he did because an ego, a fra uh, ego is fragile. Ego is always fragile. And it wouldn't be able to take the onslaught of crap mm -hmm. he's taken for all these years. So that's not an ego. That's confidence. There's a difference. So, yeah. sorry. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because what was I going to say? I was going to say something. And did I forget what I was going to say? Um, we're so programmed to think bad about ourselves and to not have confidence. So when we do tend to have confidence, it kind of comes off as kind of maybe um, for a female bitchy and for a, a male kind of like stuck up, um, kind of like Mr. T. But again, like you said, if it were his ego, you know, he, the ego is very fragile. Well, it's always he, fragile. Exactly. And so Mr. T is not fragile <laughs> by all means. If he was, he wouldn't still be doing what he's doing. Um, but we also need to be mindful of the differences between the ego and confidence. And like a lot of people might think some of my posts might be a little bit like, okay, you know, this sounds a little bit bitchy and I'm not sure why she's posting that. And maybe there's feelings hurt and everything like that. But the, the, the fact of the matter is um, something that comes along with self-confidence is also boundaries. Yes. Yeah. So um, I talked about this on my last video. I talked about this on the Dark Outpost last week. One of the biggest signs that somebody loves themselves is boundaries. Mm -hmm. And God has been, he's been shutting all the layers off of me, like all the layers off of me. Hence why I haven't really put any videos out. You know, I've been dealing with a lot of personal stuff in, in my family unit, my home, um, but I'm stronger for it. And I'm grateful that God is shutting all of these layers off of me because now I can move on in my future with confidence and strength. And um, I love myself more for it. I'm definitely stronger than I was. So, um, but I have learned to put boundaries up being an empath light worker. I've never had boundaries with people. And it's funny how, when I did put those boundaries up, everybody fled. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's happened to you, Bryce, oh, but yeah. that's something that I've been dealing a lot with. Like I have not seen my family in two years because of not doing this or putting that on, you know what I mean? Or, um, I haven't talked to them in a year, but at the same time, God has revealed to me a lot about, you know, maybe this was a toxic situation for me to be in regardless, just because they're my physical family doesn't mean they're good for me. Yeah. So Part of my self-love is I have to remove these things off of me. And I will say I had shackles and chains on me. I've been set free regardless of who I had to lose. Yeah. So I feel like a free person. I feel happier for it. I feel more blessed for it. Regardless, I've lost 
all my friends, all my family, but yet I'm still happy. You know why? Because I love who I am. I love myself enough to do that for myself. You're standing in your light and you're, and that's, and that's, I love that you're saying that. Cause like, that's the thing too, with the ego, it, with it, with someone who has an ego, because it's a false sense of self. If they, if, if you push back or you bring up criticism, they can't take it because it's fragile. The ego is fragile. But when someone has confidence and they, and someone gives them positive feedback or to course correct, they'll take it in and be able to do that. And so that's something very, very need to watch when it comes to people you're putting your trust in but at the end of the day the person you should trust the most is you period end of story you you should trust you the most all right um yeah is there anything else we should say about hygiene yeah, oh consent. i just uh consent free will and blessing your cards how to bless your cards okay, okay. let's do consent first so here's one thing stephanie and i have talked about that has become abundantly clear to us. We're not going to read on anybody, whether they're a good guy or appear to be a bad guy, or whatever, if we don't have their consent. Mm -hmm. To read on somebody, regardless of whether it's Hillary Clinton or um, the Buddha or your husband, without their consent is wrong. It's playing with dark entities. You have to have somebody's consent to read on them. Now, with that being said, we can read, if you have a question about your relationship with somebody, we can look at it from your perspective, from your mm -hmm. higher self, what's, what could possibly be the best course for you to take, but we can't tap into them. We won't tap into them because we don't have their consent. Um, mm -hmm. That is up. Uh, consent is the biggest free will. We're not going to take that from anybody. That is not of the light. If somebody is reading somebody without their consent, that's in the darkness, period. Okay. And I'm going to stand strong on that. We have to respect each other's free will. As far as the bad guys of the world right now, what does Mr. T play by law and order? We get the evidence of laws broken and we take it to a court. That's what the Alliance is doing. Yeah. They're taking it to yeah. court, whether it's military court or civilian court, that is how that needs to be happen. How, how that needs to happen. Um, so just FYI, we're just going to put that you have to have somebody's consent. All right. Let's talk about blessing the cards before we get started. Okay. Every time I use cards, it doesn't matter if I haven't used them in a couple of months or even years. I, I haven't had cards for years yet, so I haven't been in that situation. But it doesn't matter the time in between, no matter what. Every time I go to use um, multiple decks of cards or just one deck of cards, I always clean them, meaning I use um, smudging materials. Um, you guys will laugh at me. This is a little bit of sage I have left. My dog ate it. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> okay well you beat me out there oh, i got I a lot of, of this I got of them. Blood. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um my my dog got to my sage <laughs> and uh i came in the living room and there was chewed up sage she everywhere. just cleaned herself out she was blessing her insides blessing her she her. was uh, trust me if you ever smell after she eats sometimes <laughs> she needs to be blessed from the inside <laughs> but Anyways, so uh, smudging materials can be sage, um, which is um, clearing the aura, clearing the energies. A dragon's blood is a very protective type of cleansing um, material. You can use, a, uh, we have candles here, the sage candle. Um, Palo Santo, Palo Santo is really good for raising the vibrational frequency in um, the area that the smoke is hitting. Um, but I, I do highly recommend at least using sage. Um, I've also used incense before, but anyways, you want the smoke to hit the cards, um, you're not the fire. Let me just be clear on that. You don't want to burn your cards. You want the smoke to hit it. Um, and after that, what I do is I just ask for the divine creator, God, to come in and Archangel Michael and be a protectant around my cards to shield my cards from any negative energies. Um, I also envision white light around myself and the cards. Because white light is something, even if you're envisioning it, that the darkness cannot penetrate. So, um, and you might have to do that a few times when you're doing readings too. If you feel like something's off, definitely start to um, visualize that white light. Um, visualize the white light around the person that you're reading for. And so what I do is um, I ask that uh, beings, um, my spirit guides or God, uh, the divine creator and the angels, um, any anybody of my highest good that I need in the reading come through and I lovingly banish out with love and light the darkness 
and that they do not have my consent to be in the reading and that they must be banished out of the area of my reading. They have no consent over me. And you can word that how you want to. Banish is a good word to use though when it comes to getting rid of the darkness. And you always wanna say for my highest good in this here and now moment. Because the quantum world timeline is a little different than your 3D timeline. Yeah. So you gotta be very, very mindful of the words you are saying. Um, I already blessed my cards before we came on the screen here. So, but I just wanted to share with you guys what I say. Um, and you guys can come up with your own wording on that. Yeah. And I do. I mean, even before we pra I practice yoga, I do a prayer. You heard my prayer the other night in Sanskrit. I say a prayer before I even get on my yoga mat. Um, and I say it in Sanskrit. I'm pretty good at Sanskrit. Shh, don't tell anyone. You are. <laughs> I kind of speak a little Sanskrit. Um, can't speak any lang other languages that are actually in use today besides English, but uh, but uh, Sanskrit I'm pretty good at. And it's a very holy language. So it was important to me to when I went to school in India to really study it. I mean, I had to to get authorized, but um, I, I take advantage of, of knowing that that language and being able to um, use that that vibrational language to cleanse my own area, even when I'm in my house by myself about to do my practice. So, um, so yeah, do we want to get started on the questions then? Sure. Do you want to do the what you say to your cards to show them quickly? Before we what get started? Like, just say what you say, just kind of give an example of what you do before you start. Okay. All right. So I'm just asking for the divine creator to come in with Archangel Michael to come over and to protect my cards surrounding myself, Bryce, and the collective that is watching this with white platonic, bright, bright light, the brightest light that exists in the cosmos. And I lovingly banish out any of the darkness, um, anything that would want to come in that is not of my highest good, Bryce's highest good, and the collective's highest good. And I only invite in those beings of light that are for my highest good, Bryce's highest good, and the collective's highest good while watching this. And so it is. So it is. I don't say the A word anymore. No, no, no. That <laughs> I'll, let, I'll leave that out. But I have not said that anymore. Um, also, something funny, too, before we get started. So we, we were both watching, I think it was Mystic Tori. When she, and she is awesome. If you guys watch her, she's thorough. Girl can freaking read. And she talks about... When she closes off her room to do readings, she doesn't even allow insects to be in the room. Now, I'm someone that saves insects. So, like, if I see a bug, I'll, like, take it outside. I don't kill it. But she even talks about how they can be shapeshifters spying on you. And so she closes herself off. I mean, that is how serious a lot of these, and I, I don't blame them. We know the world of magic is way more real than the world of the Matrix. The spiritual warfare is literally the realest thing happening right now. So just be kind of aware of that. Um, what's in your vicinity, not just in the unseen world, but in the seen world as well. So, all right, so let's get started. So this is from Luke the Duke. And I actually, um, I love that name, Luke. He said, Luke hello, the Luke the Duke. Hello, ladies. Been loving all the shows you guys do. So thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. I do have a question for the ladies. It's a bit, bit weird, but I don't have a lot of vivid memories from childhood. Just snippets here and there. I do, however, have a clear memory of two big green serpents visiting me when I was very young, maybe age five to seven years old range. I was in my room all night. All I remember is being under my bed and snakes being there. I pouted loudly out of fear, I think, until my mom came and picked me up and took me to her bed to sleep. I remember seeing the snakes attempting to follow when I was being carried out of the room, looking over my mom's shoulder. I just wanted a little clarity. What was that? Did I dream it? Um, what was the message? P.S. We do not have pet, pet snakes when I was growing up. Smiley face. I have, I have about a dozen other questions about the mystery of me, but I will leave it there. Thanks to, for all you do. Love and light to all. So that's interesting, Luke, that you don't have any memories um, of your childhood and you probably were having some spiritual attacks. So let's look at why he wasn't having memories of his childhood. What? All right. Why was Luke the Duke not having any memories of his childhood? I kind of have a feeling of why, but let's see what the cards say. I have a, I have a feeling too. There's something. Yeah. Like um, sometimes I want to also address this with the audience too. Sometimes I really don't need my cards to do a, a reading. <laughs> um, that comes with intuition um, and practice. So 
but I do use the cards to kind of gauge a little bit on what I'm intuitively getting. So this, um, this is a very common question too, um, for those of you who don't remember your childhood. And it seems to be the same thing every time from when I read it. Yeah, what I'm getting in these cards is kind of confirming what I already thought. So we'll see what you get. I'm just going to leave it at three cards because this is kind of confirming what I... But this is a good example. This might not be true for you, Luke, but this is kind of what I thought when I read this. And this is what my cards are saying now, but it could be my perception. You know? Ooh. Vocals are messing up a little bit here. So I'll just mm -hmm. reading yours, Stephanie. I'll go ahead. I got the death in reverse, which is like oh yeah, the pentacles and the hanged man. And so kind of what I was thinking, Luke, and this is a strange phenomenon that happens to people sometimes. There's a possibility that you, your soul didn't enter your body until you were older. Um, let me explain a little bit. That means that you're going to have some scattered memories of childhood because the brain was there. But this is, doesn't mean anything bad, okay? In fact, it's kind of a good thing. This means that your soul is, from what I understand, is possibly so old and so evolved that you did, your soul didn't have to really experience your childhood, right? It, it, it could come in later. Um, I know a lot of people who, who said that's happened to, and they're really good people. Um, but you will have some scattered memories because the brain is there, but the soul didn't enter until later on. And that's kind of what I feel like my cards were saying with the hanged man, the eight of pinnacles working on something, the death in reverse. So, but what did you get, Stephanie? All right. So I, I got the magician and three of cups. So I feel like whatever was in the body, I'm getting it to walk in too. Um, whatever was in the body prior. I feel like maybe you were working with that person. Um, there's celebration in this, so it's not a bad thing. Yeah. So I just want to point that out. The Three of Cups is a celebratory card. Um, and then you got the Magician card. So it's like something flipped, something switched out. Um, let's see. I have... So Luke, if you're watching this, will you, if you don't mind, if, if you don't have to, if you don't want to, but will you put in the comment section how old you were when you started having consistent memories when you feel like you kind of what age were you when you all of a sudden have it had it'd be interesting to see how old you were when that happened also too something to point out a lot of times the flip of that soul that um, walks in it normally happens in the middle of something that um traumatic that happens in the child's life so that's something maybe to put in the comment section too um if something happened traumatic and suddenly like maybe that's when your memories came online because this is like um something traumatic could have happened because if you look at her she's like crying um stressed out so maybe there was a stressor in the um luke's childhood at the time when the soul walked in um and once that happened i feel like so this is an action card you can see him running i feel like that's when um all once this happened this particular event happened in the childhood that was traumatic it was like the soul came down and now you're actually getting your thoughts and your memories. Yeah. The person I know, I have one person I'm very close to in my life that that's the same way, Luke. Um, and he had he has memories of childhood, but he has no like feelings towards those memories. And then around the age of 12 is when he started to have like actual empathy and compassion. And he's one of the kindest human beings I know now. And he believes that's when his soul entered his body was at the age of 12. And it just means that Luke, you're just, you're just such an advanced soul that you didn't have to really be here to experience however many years you don't remember. You didn't, you, you've already experienced that so much that you didn't really, you came in when you, in it, that action card of trauma, that probably was what told your soul it was time to drop into this body. And this is interesting too. And Stephanie, we've talked about this off camera. Your soul also fragments. So there's a part of you that of your soul that's living within this body, but you also have a higher self and you also have different elements of your soul that are still in the quantum, still doing things. So that's another aspect of that as well, is that your soul was being used in so many different el areas elsewhere that it didn't need to come into human until the point it needed to, in order to prepare you for where we are, I think right now in this, this timeline. 
I pulled a Palladian card for him because I feel like there is a star seed aspect of him. Um, so, uh, Luke, what I'm going to suggest to you is I pulled the dream time card. So um, maybe you could ask um, your guides or angels or divine creator to maybe give you a sense of maybe what happened through your dream space and just pay attention to um, any dreams that come in to um, your memory and maybe start writing down and logging things. Yeah. All right, Luke, I hope that helps. Let us know. So Matilda asked, one of my cats keeps seeing spirits in my bedroom at night. I watch him looking at the ceiling and chatting to it. So can I ask, who is he chatting to? Um, I guess we have permission to channel our cat's higher self. Do, do we? Yeah. Sure. I can uh, pull some cards on that and see. I channel my dog. Yeah. <laughs> And you guys, so yesterday I posted a video of my dog, which I'd sent to, to Stephanie after it happened. My dog picked up something in our my house that was not very good. And I threw Florida water on it. And man, it smelled bad. So apparently that's the soul fate. That's demonic. So my dog totally alerted me. And I, I and people don't worry about don't don't be afraid of dark entities, guys. Like they're kind of pathetic. Like that's oh why they God, are they? You. They're so pathetic. <laughs> every time laugh. I know, every time I get attacked, now I'm like, you're literally just making me stronger. Like you're. Yep. I was more upset that my it was five o'clock in the morning, and I live in the middle of the city, so I was more more worried about my dog waking up our neighbors because he was barking so loud than I was about whatever was in my house. I just threw Florida water on it and banished it. So. It, it literally don't be afraid of the darkness, guys. The darkness is afraid of you. That's why it does so yeah. much to try to scare you. Right, give me a sec here. I'm just still shuffling a little bit. I'm going to pull some angel oracles in this. Huh. Well, I definitely think it's a good entity, whatever it is, because with the yes. angel cards, I pulled friendship willpower and dreams so it looks like an entity that's trying to come in through your dream space to maybe help you with like your confidence maybe and it's coming it's coming for benevolent purposes for the friendship cards here that's so weird you got that because i clarified a couple cards i couldn't understand for a second there okay so yeah i feel like whatever the this is about the cat and what the cat is looking at right i feel like it might be either galactic or spiritual family members I actually got this on somebody I read for the other day that their their cat was actually communicating with um off world or families yeah. um and I feel like kind of give me a sec here yeah I feel like it's it's even though the cat's the one that can see it and acknowledge it I feel like they're there for her yeah it's like there's an offering to not I feel like, I feel like it's like trying to help her forgive something in her life. Maybe something traumatic happened. Was this Matilda, right? That's her name. I feel like, so animals help heal us. Um, and a lot of our animals right now are probably either like our familiars, which is like an animal that's been with us several times in several different lifetimes. My dog, Abby has been with me on her third mission with me in my lifetime now and 55 other times from what I've divined. Um, so she's my familiar. Um, a lot of us star seeds do have one and I feel like they have come, they've incarnated back right now with us a lot of times to help us learn forgiveness and um, allow us not, we need to let go of things. So this is karmic stuff and this is like the hangman's stage. So it's like a lot of us are feeling so like stagnant right now, blocked, um, we're having a hard time maybe letting go of what God is trying to remove from us. Yeah. It's okay to lose something. And I, I reiterate this all the time is I've always had a fear of rejection, a fear of loss. And the thing is now I have, because my mind is operating in a 5D consciousness for the most part, don't get me wrong. I have my days of 3D consciousness because I'm still living this human life in this third density planet world. Um, so the consciousness does creep back in at, a t at on occasion, but um how do i word this um 
But once you get into a certain conscious state and you're pretty much up in that 5D consciousness, you have a different perception on losing people or even death. So um, I feel like maybe God is trying to strip away certain things, especially maybe like some kind of karmatic kind of relationships, maybe. Maybe she's going through something with some friends or family or whatnot. And she also feels like the hangman state. So I feel like the cat is maybe being guided by the off world or family to um, maybe give instruction on how to heal her owner, um, heal Matilda. Um, I don't like to say owner because it's really like our animals are our brothers and sisters, really. Um, and I feel like this isn't a death card for death, really. This is more like, I think Matilda, what your cat is trying to help you do is maybe rebirth into who you actually are. Yeah. And I just pulled, something told me to pull from my Mary, Mother Mary Oracle book, Oracle deck, and I got Our Lady Who Sends Angels. So yeah. you're being sent guidance and, and, and Stephanie's right. Like y'all like sit back and think about this. Everything you know, to be real is an illusion and it, we're going to have to face it. We're going to have to face the fact that our whole lives are about to completely change. And that can be scary because we don't know what that looks like. The unknown is scary. Even though we know it's going to be beautiful, we still don't understand it. And yes, karmic. So there's different relationships. Karmic relationships are, they can be, they are people in your lives that are there to teach you some hard lessons and can be very, very brutal. Dharmic relationships, like Stephanie and I have a dharmic relationship. You know, it's very even keeled. It's very equal and balanced. You learn and grow together and you grow together in friendship and love and whatever. Then you have the soul. We're also soul family, you know, in the twin flame. So there's all these different categories of how people interact with your energies in your life. Now, the hard thing about karmic relationships Sometimes they can be pretty evil too, down to the core. They can trigger a lot of darkness. And um, you'll hear a lot of readers say, you know, once, once you realize someone's a karmic, that's the time to then remove yourself from that situation. And so if there is pain from a situation, Matilda, that's, that Stephanie's maybe picking up on and they want you to heal from it, maybe just understanding what a karmic relation is will help you kind of mm -hmm. move past that, if that makes sense. That's helped me a lot with people in my life who even in the past, who maybe I don't speak to anymore, or there was, I've, oh, okay, those were karmic relationships. That's why. That's okay, cool. I can make peace with that mm -hmm. now. Does that make sense? And it's also very important to understand forgiving yourself too, because yeah. we have to understand as well. You know, I think of the programming we've been through in the third density world too is um, lack of forgiving ourselves, which then puts us in the hangman state and we can't move forward. We can't, we are not allowing God to shut doors and open new doors. So when you forgive yourself, there's such a freedom in it. I don't care what you did. Learn to forgive yourself, learn to love yourself. And you know what? You're not going to be perfect. And that's okay because we're just here for a human experience and the mistakes you made before you were born, you signed a contract with God saying you were going to make those mistakes. So it's okay. Yeah. We, you chose a life path. Some are ro more rockier than others. But once you get yourself in that 5D mindset that things happen because I had that in my contract, yeah, it was for me to learn and evolve. What's not okay is sitting in that, um, that shame, that guilt. That's what the devil wants you to do. Yeah. It's that you take it and you, you learn from it and then you rise up from it. You rise up from the ashes, you rebirth yourself. So that's super important. Also going into fourth density, because you want to make sure that you're operating on that 5d consciousness where you have this absolute pure love for yourself. Um, and you, you have a freedom because you forgave yourself. We all made mistakes. We all have PTSD from this dense world. Yeah. This has been a traumatic world for us to live in. It's, I don't care who you are. It's traumatic. So that's the beauty is we're walking into this beautiful heaven on earth world, whether you believe it or not, that's what we're destined to. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. Yeah. Yeah. That, I love that you said that because it is also a soul contract. And if something has happened to you and you've made mistakes, but you've grown and you've learned from them, then your soul fulfilled what it needed to do. And you can let that go. Now you can let it go. You know, God is love. God, God doesn't, there's no fear. If there's fear, it's not love. There shouldn't be any fear with love. It's not the same thing. So, um, so yeah, Matilda, hopefully that makes some sense to you and you can maybe start, um, and you, Matilda, I think what the cat and the, the, your cat is talking to your off worlders and trying to like help you heal. And, and the point is though, that you have to do that yourself. No one's going to save you. You have to do that yourself. And so I, I just had a download.
this happened to me. Okay, my dog has been howling every morning. Bryce, you already know this for the audience. My dog has been howling every morning. She's part husky, so she does howl a little bit. She's a mouthy girl. She's she's a diva. She's a diva. Um, but I, I was channeling her, and what I was getting was um, she's sending me light language codes to upgrade my DNA. I wonder if your cat Matilda is also helping your DNA upgrade because um, animals, cats especially, oh my God, cats are super psychic. They see through the through the veil like crazy. I wonder if she's also healing you on a level where she's also sending you some light coats. So that's something to be mindful of too. Maybe she's meowing a little bit me more. I've noticed that with a lot of cats, like when I'm in group, a lot of cats are like meowing at their, um, at, you know, their human, their humans. They're, uh, <laughs> they're people. So I don't like, again, I don't like to call them owners because they're just, you know, they're, they're family members. Um, so that's something to kind of pick up on as well. Yeah, for sure. I know that Ravi, my dog, Ravi is my familiar. I mean, he's totally my familiar. He's here to help me. So, um, absolutely. So for sure. All right. This is from a vet. Hi, lovely ladies. Thank you for keeping me sane somewhat over the past year. Question when I was when I was three, I was with my mom and she told, and I told her that she wasn't always my mom and that the sky is different here. And there is only one moon. I also told her I had a sister named sky <laughs> is sky still there. And will we meet soon or, or where is there? So I guess Yvette, what you're asking is like, obviously as a child, you knew you came from somewhere else and you knew your mom hadn't always, cause obviously you, you had more than one moon in the last place you live. So first of all, can we get an idea of where Yvette was? Will the cards give us any indication in that? I'm not that advanced yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can try to maybe listen in on a download. Um, I, I, I wish I knew what it looked like. I mean, I've astro traveled a little bit in my dream space on some planets. Can you tell about the, dream, the same dream we both had the other night? Oh my God, that was incredible. Yeah, so Bryce and I both had the exact same dream. Exact same dream. Um, I divinated on it, trying to decode it and everything. So we were having healing on the Pleiades. And um, for those of you who have not ever astro traveled to the Pleiades, which could be a great deal of people at this point in time, yeah. um, the colors were, um, I can't even describe them. Can you describe yeah, it? No, it was not earth. Crystals everywhere. Like it, I thought it was grass, but it was like crystals. Um, and so we had, um, people that were kind of showing us how to heal ourselves with crystals. And it's weird because you texted, I, I forgot which one of us texted each other. Um, you texted me and then I was like, I, holy shit. Same. Yeah. Same. It was incredible. Um, so a lot of you, you know, if you're close to somebody or you're, you're definitely like working with somebody or you have someone in your family or your friends who are soul family, you might actually be starting to get um, very similar dreams or the same dream because maybe in dream space, you're astro traveling with them, but it was quite incredible. Um, and it was kind of like, um, uh, confirmation that you know what we're divinating what we're feeling like and what we're going through um we're not going crazy um <laughs> so it, it, i think the divine also knows that we do need some kind of nuggets of information when we're um when we're seeing visions and, and feeling things and um I, i'm a girl of confirmation i don't know if that's my programming from the church or what, but, um, I, I definitely always need confirmation. And that was, I was like, holy moly. And it was absolutely incredible. It's one of those dreams that like you didn't want to wake up from. Oh yeah. Yes. The so, love that you felt from the Palladians was just amazing. Yeah. I don't know if you felt that. Emotional. Yeah. Well, they were trying to, they were not only in the dream where they trying to heal us, but they were trying to teach us how to heal ourselves and how to heal other people too. Um, so I, and I, for some reason I'm getting Palladians with, um, with Yvette I here. was too. I was so, too. And I, I, I actually, actually, the moment you read the question, I, I, I saw my dream again. Yeah. Like, I saw her there almost, you know what I mean? So I saw that sky, like the sky was, I don't know. What was it like a purpley? Yeah. It was like, yeah, it was like pink. Purple. It was, yeah, it was beautiful. I pulled one, uh, one, uh, Oracle card from mother Mary and it's our, our lady of soul birth, which I thought was interesting that that's the card that came out. And I asked in my cards, who is sky is who I asked. She's talking about a sister named sky. And I got the six of pentacles, which is balance the hermit card, 
And then I've got um, the eight of wands. So, I so the six of pentacles, it's definitely somebody that's working with her. I feel like guiding her maybe. Yeah. The hermit card is like the off worlder card too. One, yeah. One of them. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. So and I think eight of wands. I'm trying to think. Well, you, you give your interpretation. Go ahead. I think that Sky is one of your off worlder family members. And I think that she's around you. And has been around you your whole life. And that's your soul agreement. That's the agreement that two souls made in this life that, that she would come, that you would come down to earth and that she would be there on the other side of the veil helping you. And I have a feeling, and this is just my gut feeling, Yvette, that you're eventually going to start seeing her when you're not going to be, I don't know if you'd be afraid of seeing that, but when, when the time comes, you're going to actually start seeing her. But I also kind of feel like maybe when the, when the timeline flips, she might not have to guide you anymore. She might be able to incarnate elsewhere if she needs to. Okay. So I'm going to, I pulled some cards. I'm also going to pull a Palladian card too, real quick, because I feel like I just need to. Well, that's an interesting card. I've never gotten that one before. Let me do one more. And I just pulled from the uh, uh, angel deck and I got trust. So just trust it, um, Yvette. Oh my God, that goes with mine. Yeah, just trust. The yeah. enlightened gut. So what do yeah. we talk about all the time? We're talking about gut feelings. Um, truth is at a certain vibration. So your gut will react to that vibration, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Um, let me see one more card and then I will get to my tarot read here. So I got the star centers. And if you look on this picture, it's like, it almost looks kind of like a grid of some kind. I feel like there might be some sort of crystalline grid work being done, maybe between the two of you. So um, freaking crazy. I've actually never pulled this card either. And I just got cleansing, Raphael cleansing. So we talk about the grid. So maybe part of your purpose, Yvette, whether you know it or not, is to energetically cleanse the different grid yeah. lines. And that's what Sky's helping you with. Because I've never pulled this card before. Raphael's card of cleansing. I feel like in conjunction with your card reading, Brace, too, with this, um, I feel like she was actually ripped away from Sky because this is, um, so we have the Seven of Swords. So Seven of Swords is like stealing, ripping something away. There's a separation there of some kind, uh, along with the Ten of um, Swords, which is like a surrender to. So it's like she was like ripped away. And I feel like it's been very, very difficult. Um, yeah, there's been a feeling of loss with that card. Um, and I feel like she's had to... Um, this is a perceptions card. So um, this is a little bit different in the deck. You don't normally see this card, but I feel like that um, she's been working on herself with this card. Maybe there's a different perception of something. There's a lot of heartbreak. I feel like um, going into this question, because I wonder if they're soul. I wonder if they're soul sisters, like, you know, like twin sisters. Yeah. Twin I, soul sisters. Yeah. And I think the ripping away could have also been, so I don't, I don't know if I've spoke about this before on this channel or not, but I had a memory of um, coming down to earth and there. And, and I, I know I told Stephanie and Taylor about it offline of when I remembered walking down the hallway and like yeah. sitting and being like ripped and the person I went down with, I, that feeling of like, even though we both agreed to it, that like feeling of being ripped away from someone, that panic. And so that could also be just the fact that they're separated um, between one side of the veil and the other side of the veil. Even if they did agree to it, there's still that like that heart center, like something's missing, you know? Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I feel like, um, so if you look on the bottom of this card, it says manifestation. I feel like the universe is saying you need to start manifesting that you will reunite with this particular soul sister because um, there is celebration that comes afterwards. A lot of us are going to be meeting our, um, our star families and um, which I'm stoked about. Um, I feel like I will have a great relationship with those um, star family members. So 
Um, yeah, just manifest it and uh, visualize it. And also you can start practicing maybe some telepathy. So all you have to do is just honestly talk to that person. They will hear you through the quantum, whatever you're hearing back. Um, and just keep, it's a practice. So it, it might not come online right away, but it is definitely a practice. Telepathy is more real than our vocal language, believe it or not. Yeah. And I just, I asked for the young game card. I was like, I'm just gonna pull one in the card deck for you, Yvette. And I got the Empress, Empress card. So whatever you're working on, whatever you, whatever you, your mission is on this earth, and that's up for you to, to understand, you got this. You're the most powerful in the deck. So whether that's the help with sky, are you in your own sovereignty? So um, yeah, just keep manifesting girl. Cause you're here for a reason. So Absolutely. All right. So this is from Oregon Farm Girl. I would like to ask if I'm blocking communi communication with my extraterrestrial family. I feel them, but no communication. So Oregon Farm Girl. She's asking if she's personally blocking the communication. Or if she's, let me go back and re-see how she's word that. If Is she blocking the communication? Yes, yeah, she said, I would like to ask if I am blocking communication with my extraterrestrial family. I feel them, but no communication. And I will say Oregon Farm Girl too. You have to remember that beings of the light um, don't want to scare you. And so if you feel them around you, but you can't see them or they're not, it doesn't mean they're not talking to you. They could be talking to you in dream space, you know, but they don't want to scare you. That They don't want to cause you fear. And they, I think they do understand that being here on this earthly planet, that could be a little shocking to the system to see something like that. So, or hear something like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll see what you get. Stephanie, I'm going to pull from the um, angel deck again. Okay. Oracles. Oregon farm girl. Let's see. And something we found from some other person too, sometimes they won't, won't communicate because they need you to rest. Right. We got that. Feeling. A lot of people are being blocked right now because they need to stop and rest. They need you to rest, which means that you got some work to do soon. You're important. You're going to have a lot of work to do soon. So that could be the case at all. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just means they want, they want you to rest right now. Um, so let's see. Ooh. She is blocking it. They're, I think they're offering, they're offering communication. Pages are oftentimes a communication. This is physical communication. Um, and then I do have the star card, which is interesting because that is talking about off world or energy right there. It's also Aquarian energy. Um, so I feel like they are trying to communicate, but I feel like you might, maybe not a blockage, but maybe you're hearing them, but you're not trusting it or believing it because this is a non-trustworthy card this is often talking about theft um you might be a little bit um nervous about communicating with these beings um maybe you're waiting for a physical appearance rather than a, t a telepathic appearance first um i would just be mindful of maybe if you're hearing something what i do is i i have this practice i'm a dork i whatever um when i take my dogs out to go outside i often will see the ships above my head um they I don't see them as much anymore because I think they're more cloaked lately for whatever reason that is. Um, but what I do is I literally out loud, I will say thank you for protecting me and I give them gratitude. And oftentimes I will feel the love energy back. Oftentimes when we do have communication with these off world or family and friends, it's really um, telepathic at first. And it's an energy feeling. So you will feel the energy that penetrates your heart center. So just be mindful of how your heart center feels if you're trying to communicate. But I would just trust. Um, also, too, it, there might be a little bit of fuzziness in between the timelines as well. Because I use this as like a timeline card. So there is a little bit of communication disruption right now. Just because we're in so many different timelines that are converging at the moment. There's a lot of astro astrological changes going on. So that's something to also be mindful. They might be a little bit more cloaked. You might be a little bit more cloaked right now. I do get a yes on the question because that is an ace. Um, I don't feel it's like a permanent thing, though. I feel like this is a very temporary thing. Um, I would definitely go within and just trust your gut. Try to talk uh, telepathically at first. Don't expect a physical appearance first. Um, definitely try to talk to them maybe outside or in your home. Um, if you've got a pet, anytime you take them out to go to the bathroom, that's a good time, like at nighttime when I actually can see them. And don't feel silly. Trust me. If you guys saw 
me outside with my dogs, you would be like, okay, you're just a weirdo. <laughs> I'm like, thank you so much. <laughs> and my neighbors aren't like, what the hell is wrong with her? I can't do that in the middle of the city or I will be sent to an insane asylum, but I got the same. It, the power is in your hands, Oregon farm girl. It's all in your hands from the angel cards I got. Cause I pulled meditation. I am presence and balance. So you need to balance yourself. All right. So if there's some stress going on in your life, that might also be blocking it. So start a meditation practice. It's so funny because Catherine and I were talking about the other day. There's so many different forms of meditation. It doesn't mean you have to just sit in silence. There's breathing meditation. There's walking meditations. Also, just be able to balance yourself and become more sovereign within yourself. And I think that that blockage will start to release. I'm just going to so. pull a move for her real quick. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I feel like maybe, so this is a personal issue reaches resolution. Maybe that's being worked on first. And then emotions are running high. I mean, uh, Oregon Farmer Girl, I'm not saying this is like a, an actual thing that is going on with you. But if it is, this is just something to be mindful of. Maybe start to work out some personal stuff. If some, You might have a karmic in your life that needs to be shed first before you can actually start channeling your off-world or family. Um and then I have the nothing is set in stone yet. So I feel like this is not something that is going to be um, a permanent thing. I feel like you will have access. Um, but definitely, if you have some certain things in your life that are not feeling right, there's karmics in your life that are maybe holding you down. Maybe the vibrational frequency of what you are around right now might not be suitable for them to contact. And that might be another reason why maybe you're blocking them. It, I, I'm not getting an intentional blockage. I'm getting there's something going on in your personal life that might be causing the blockage because that vibrational frequency, these off-worlders, they operate at a very high frequency, very yeah. high dimension. So um, you might need to release some old stuff in your life. Yeah, I, the same. that's kind of what I was getting to. Um, and when you were saying that about getting rid of like toxic relationships, like karmic relationships are toxic relationships, transmutation, communion. Yeah. So yeah. get rid of the toxicity, um, whether that's somebody in your life that needs to be kind of lesson learned, separate boundaries. That's that could be with her heart center too. Uh, going back to the whole forgiveness thing. I'm not even saying it's like a, even a, some, somebody around her in her life. Yeah, exactly. So I, I just had this download come to me just now. I feel like maybe you need to clear out your heart center first and you need to lift your own vibrational frequency as well. If you're, um, if you're a four of pentacles, my four of pentacles card is you're holding yourself down. You could be doing that to yourself. You could, uh, somebody could be doing that to you, but we all have free will. It's up to you to let go of the old and look within and forgiveness. There's, there needs to be some forgiveness maybe, um, of yourself or maybe somebody else in order for your frequency to go up and, um, lift up your spirits, you know, take a salt bath or meditate or do some sort of exercise that is going to help you um, ground yourself and bring you to a zero point where you are more um, in love with yourself and forgiving of yourself. Yeah. All right. Let's do one more question for this episode. So this is from Adam. There's a theory that we're constantly shifting between realities and we've gone through doomsday scenario many times. We don't remember going through the end times because we've ended up in the universe where the worst case scenario hasn't happened. The kind of reality we, we, we end up in depends on our thoughts, our vibrational states and our frequencies. What do you think about it? Well, actually, according to the Cassiopeians, we are t constantly shifting between timelines. That's a timeline flip we're going through right now. Um, but according to the Cassiopeians, we are living out what we're living out right now in our timeline is the timeline of Atlantis. And I think this is going to be, I think for some people, this is going to make total sense, but for people who have been super, super, super brainwashed by the church or super, super, super brainwashed by science, quote unquote science, the fall of Atlantis did not happen that long ago, guys. What, like a thousand years ago? Yeah. If that. Yeah. The fall of Atlantis did not happen that long ago. It had to be a little over a thousand years because this is the timeline we're looking at right now. And I'm not saying that this is true. This is just what we found. Atlant the fall of Atlantis was the apocalypse, one of many apocalypse. All right. And then we went through this thousand years of peace with Yahshua and the Magdalene. And then Lucifer was released again for this final battle. Okay. Tartaria, those videos you see, that that's the thousand year reign of, of, Christ that they wanted us to think didn't happen. Now with us re reliving what happened at the original apocalypse, 
we are now living that karma out, that cause and effect out, except for this time, we are going to be going shifting for the positive. With the fall of Atlantis, the dark bunch, the dark group took over, manipulated our DNA, entered in the rhesus factor into blood systems, all that kind of stuff. Now we are cleansing that. So it's the same thing. It's the same kind of patterns as far as what's happening with this battle, but it's going to turn out differently. And we're going to shift into a totally new timeline, which we have to because the earth itself is not going to be as dense. So it's not just us. It's not just us. It's mother earth too. That's also transmuting this, this energy. So do you want to pull, pull cards on it though? And see what I have to say. And yes, our thoughts do very much have to do with this. This is why we can't stay in the low vibrational stuff anymore. We need to stop talking about the dark stuff they've done. That keeps us low. We have to look forward to the future. We have to start raising our own vibrations to transcend the lower densities. The lower densities, um, whether they be human or off-world or whatever, are not going to be able to stay they're not going to be able to hold anything in, in the new vibration because they can't match that frequency. So, oh yes. And I just pulled this uh, serenity card, but I like, I think the picture is more important. It's that touching of God and, and, and man. So we're coming in more alignment with the God source, the light energy, right? Instead of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Our words and emotions do play a huge part. Like you said, I do agree with that. Um, because the king of swords is a very sharp tongue. Um, swords are words. Um, and the, the king of swords can be good or bad. So the king of swords can either be very uh, vocally uh, abusive. Sorry, A-B-U-S-E, I-V-E. Um, and then you have the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups is, it's a loving card. The Knight of Cups is kind of like, um, talks about uh, a love offering oftentimes. So I feel like we just have to be very mindful of our tongue. And we have to be very mindful of our heart centers. Um, and I, I'm trying to kind of go around with the question is here. Um, so... How do I say this? Emotions and your your thoughts and your words do play a part in it. But again, it's like we've been hoodwinked. It's yeah. like we've been blinded. There's a lot of programming. The church has a huge thing to do with it. I can't tell you how many years I spent afraid of the apocalypse because um, of what the church said. Um, and so when I finally was released from that bondage, it was like uh, a whole new world came over me. And I became very excited about this time period. Um let me see. And well, I pulled some other Mary cards and I think it's just basically saying we got to keep our vibrations up. Cause so I got our lady of soul birth again, our lady of radiant grace and our lady of divine presence. So we have to keep our vibration yeah. up in order to push this forward. We can't even, even though there are truthers out there that I think their intentions are in the right place. We have to move away from all the doom and gloom of what this group has done to us. We went through that shock. We went through that trauma. Now we have to go, okay, we can't change the past, but we can change the future. And if we keep harping on everything that's negative, we keep staying in that low vibration. We keep staying in that anger. Well, anger isn't necessarily bad. We have to have wisdom in that anger. We have to use that anger to transmute our thoughts and bring us vibrationally higher. Okay, well, this isn't going to happen in the new world. In the new, new world, new earth, we're going we're gonna to do things differently and we're going to start that now right now yeah. coming from our heart center i the way i'm interpreting these next two cards and then i got a couple more cards after this um i feel like number one this is very destined to happen but i don't normally read the chariot card this way i'm reading it in a biblical aspect like the the book of isaiah not isaiah i'm sorry ezekiel so if you read the book of ezekiel chapter one it goes into a lot of off-worlder stuff so if you still believe in your bible and you still read your bible and you want to know that there's off-worlder presence on this planet Go to Ezekiel chapter one. You're going to read all about the different chariots. You're going to read about the uh, the cigar looking chariots. I forgot what they call them in the Bible, but then the, the round wheels and everything like that. So I'm reading it this way. 
and then the star card, which is oftentimes like an off-worlder card for me. So I feel like this has a lot to do with the cosmos, an uplift of the vibrational frequency of not just earth, but of the cosmos. And I feel like this is us reconnecting with our soul families and our star families. So I feel like, yes, this has happened on multiple occasions. It's not a doomsday situation. This is actually a uh, situation where we need to be very, very excited. The more excited we are, the more we laugh, the more happy we feel the quicker this will happen because the vibrational frequency of earth depends on our emotions, our tongue, um, everything we utter is a spell cast. Yeah. So you need to be very, very mindful of how you are uh, wording things. Um, you want to stay in the positive. So it takes a little bit of practice at first. Yes. Um, but just be very mindful to continue to try to practice um, good spells good positive spell casting on yourself. When you say I am, whatever comes after it is the most important thing you could ever say. If you say I am stupid, well, guess what? Good things are not going to happen to you. You yeah. want to say I am beautiful. I am smart. I am successful. I am yeah. uh, wonderful. I am powerful. Absolutely. And those things will start to manifest. You are speaking them into action. You're speaking it to the universe to create it. Um, Cause we are creators with our mouth, our mind and our feelings. Um, so, I'm trying to think if I answered that question correctly. I think that it's a multidimensional question. Yeah. And we are, it's prophesized, not just through mainstream religions, but in also um, fringe religions that this is what's about to happen, that, that there is, what do they say? Nothing can stop what's coming. Now I want to focus back on the laughter. Let's end on that because that is so important, guys. We have to have a sense of humor. Being able to laugh raises your vibration. Um, I was just telling Stephanie that, you know, I try to post funny memes and stuff. And I've had so many people in the truth or community get mad because we need to be serious. No, that's keeping your vibration low. Yeah. That's what the dark group wants you to do. They want to take away your humor. They want to take away comedy. They yeah. want to take all that away. You have to be able to laugh. You yeah. have to. If you don't do that, then you're, you're not going to be able to ascend to the new world. Like you're going to have to be able to laugh at things. And I know most people are that way, but I want to focus on that. Demons can't laugh. Demons don't know how to laugh. Demons don't know how to joke. You want to disarm a demon? Laugh at them. They don't know what to do with it. They literally don't know what to do with it. The most spiritual people laugh their asses off. Yeah. So um, I also want to point out to... Um, well, I, I want to share this because this was, I know you already know this, Bryce. Um, of course, um, I had a couple of doom and gloom days a couple of weeks ago. And I went back to our video where we started to laugh our asses off nonstop because that just made my day. <laughs> and what I noticed is that we started to laugh hysterically on the timestamp of 3 3 Three, three. So 33 minutes and 33 seconds. Now, I know we know that uh, Satan's number he's been using uh, with the, you know, the powers that be was 33. But the 333 three, three, or the 3333 three, 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 or whatever, how many threes there are, is actually Christ consciousness. So afterward, when we were talking about that video after it posted, um, we were talking about how we think that was divinely orchestrated to lift the vibrations of people that, you know, maybe you were in some doom and gloom moments or just lift the vibration of the world, you know, in general. So um, then I was, it was one o'clock in the morning and I was really upset about something. And I went back to that because I'm like, you know, what? I need some laughter in my life and, you know, let's put on the, our, our wonderful video there. And I noticed it. Oh, by the way, you have something go past you. I just had to oh, by, yeah. oh my so. gosh, that was, that was crazy. That looked like an actual spirit. Um, but yeah, the timestamp was three, 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 three. So Christ consciousness. So that was absolutely divinely orchestrated. Um, I did pull a couple oracles to end off with Bryce. I if you too. want, but okay. I know who that was, by the way, I think Magdalene. I know who it is too. Yeah. Mary Magdalene. Yeah. She's been with you quite a bit lately. So yeah. anyways, did you want to go first or do you want me to go first with my oracles? I mean, I, yeah, I just pulled three. I got trust, planetary cycles. This is just it. So trust that we're coming into a prophecy where we're going to be, the probability of us going positive is destined. And when we get there, it's going to be ecstasy. So this is trust. Well, just trust it, guys. Trust it. Laugh your ass off. 
have fun with your families, smile at everyone you see, start living, just go ahead and put yourself, be like, I'm already here. I'm already in the 4D planet in the fifth dimension. I'm already here. What you going to do, darkness? I'm already here. This Manifest it into action. Yes. That's what you can do. And give, give the divine creator absolute and utmost gratitude that you have already, uh, you've already arrived, that it's already here. Um, no need to sulk and sell, you know, in, in yeah. depression because you know what we will get there but the thing is um part of this is we need to learn how to manifest manifesting isn't praying for something to happen it is giving gratitude that it already happened because you then you're putting it into the universe that it already happened so it has to happen it's destined to happen um so i pulled from a couple oracles so um i'll uh, go from uh i'll do this deck first so i feel like the uh god our creator is trying to say open up to your guides this could be ancestors. My grandmother has been guiding me. Trust me. She makes me laugh all the time. Bryce knows this. Taylor knows this. Um, <laughs> so my grandmother is always with me. I also have Archangel Gabriel on my side as well. Often chatting in my ear a little bit. I get that ringing in my ear and then all of a sudden I start getting downloads. That's that's my good friend, Gabriel. Um, we are working on healing right now. So definitely um, this is a time to start working on your personal growth, your spiritual growth and your healing that starts off with the heart center in which I get the love card. So that's super, super important because when we ascend, the biggest thing that's going to open up is that heart center. That is so important. Um, so if we're talking about maybe opening the, the heart center, I have the creativity and the dance card. So again, that goes back to like what we talk about a lot is that zero point. What brings you back to your zero point? What helps your vibrational frequency go up? Yes, I dance like a lunatic in my kitchen while holding a wooden spoon and singing to my dogs because that's the only audience I have usually when I'm cooking. My, my son doesn't like to stick around and be the audience. <laughs> But I do sing. So I'm, I'm, I'm it's not like they're listening to somebody who is like way off tune or anything like that. So I do have a little bit of ability. So it's not that horrible. <laughs> Anyways, doing something creative, doing something that is going to just bring you back into balance is so important. And then I have the go within card. I don't know how many times I reiterate that on my videos and your videos too, Bryce. Um, this is super important to do is go within, follow your intuition, your gut instinct. And then we have the sacred healing card. Again, this is reiterating. We need to start really working on our healing going forward. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, thank you, Stephanie. And guys, we will, we will continue with the rest of the questions. Well, actually I'm, I'm saying next week because we're filming this on Friday, but it's going to air Monday. So you might get, you might get us twice in one week this week. So, um, and speaking of, I'm going offline this weekend because Saturday I'm going to go up and go hiking. I'm going to go and enjoy nature. And that's going to be my kind of few hours away from the world and just to be in, in divinity's creation. And so I highly suggest you guys dance, sing, draw, write poetry, do um speaking of healing we know stephanie is super talented with her card reader so i'm going to put all of stephanie's links down below and her venmo if you want to tip her if she answered your questions it's not necessary but if you want to i'm going to put her venmo down in the in the description box below along with her contacts if you want to book a full reading with her um and also i'm going to put shanti from aquarius rising africa i'm going to put her links down as well because shanti has become such a dear sweet friend of mine you guys know i do aquarius rising africa like every other week i'm on their show and i'm also going to be on their new channel as well with solutions um last week we were supposed to go live last monday this monday as you're watching it i've already probably gone live with them again but we halted that show because shanti ended up doing some major healing work on me um, and she's incredibly talented as well. So I'm going to put her links down there too. If you need a little bit of guidance or someone that can, she's over in South Africa, but that's why we have zoom guys. That's why we got zoom. Um, she uses the Tibetan healing bowls. And so she's amazing as well. So I'm going to put all that down in the description box because just because you have to do that work yourself, circle back where we were, where we started with doesn't mean you can't have help and you can't have guides and teachers there to, to help you along your own journey. So thank you so much guys for tuning in. Please know that the best is absolutely yet to come and nothing, nothing can stop what is coming. Nope. So God bless guys. Bye. Bye everyone.